Hey guys, I'm going to go over the critique format with you and show you how you can write a critique, give you all the details. You should have printed out the handout that I emailed to you on NGRADE. So if you haven't gone to NGRADE and printed out that critique uh, piece of paper, that handout, then go and do that now. Then come back and watch the video because you really need to have that in front of you. As I go through the outline, I want you to take notes. Um, I may say something that's not exactly written down on the outline, so you need to know how to do that. Um, first of all, the first thing that you need to do on the critique is your introduction. Your introduction is different from the type of introduction that we've done before. Uh, the critique is really not the same thing as a book report. A critique is more like when you go to, uh, when you watch on TV and they're reviewing a movie, or uh, maybe you read a review in a magazine of a book or an album that you're interested in purchasing, that's more of what a critique is. It kind of gives a brief overview of the story, and then it gives some insight into uh, how you feel about the actual book. So it's not really going to be a retelling of the whole story. You will tell parts of it, uh, but several of your paragraphs are not going to include any summary at all. So don't worry about trying to summarize the story. This will be typed just like any other assignment. You will double space. Make sure you do your heading first. The title can just be the title of the book that you read. You'll be doing it, this first critique, you'll be doing it on one of the um, books that you read for summer reading. And for those of you who didn't do summer reading, I had asked you to go ahead and read a book um, prior to doing this. So hopefully you've got that finished. So the first thing is your introduction. The introduction needs to have a dramatic opener. We talked about those dramatic openers back when we did the friendship essay. So you might need to go back and review uh, what exactly the different types of dramatic openers are. But remember, you want to capture attention of the reader. So use some type of a dramatic opener. Next, you need to include the title of the book. Remember, with book titles, we underline them. Uh, you want to include the whole name of the author who wrote the book. And then the publisher, when you open up the cover and you look at the cover page, it'll tell you who the publisher of the book was, where was it published, and the year that it was published. And you want that very first year. We're not looking at the, the editions, the different printings of the book. We want the first uh, publication of the book. The next thing you want to include is the type of story that it is. Is it a fairy tale? Is it a fable? Is it an adventure story, historical fiction, mystery, uh, drama? There's lots of different types of books that you can read, and so you want to tell what type of book it is. Um, the next thing is a short biography of the author. So you want to look up some information about who wrote the book and give me about two or three sentences of information about that author. Don't copy and paste it off of Wikipedia. Read the information and then just give me a couple of sentences in your own words about who the author was. And then finish that first paragraph with what is the setting or the mood of the story? Um, how does it make you feel? What What is the overall mood that the author is trying to get across? Sometimes they're lively, they're bright and happy, it might be suspenseful, it might be very humorous, it might be very solemn. So it depends on the type of book or the actual book that you read. That is the only information that goes into the introduction. So you're not going to talk about the characters, you're not going to talk about the action of the story, none of that is going to go in that very first paragraph. Okay, so just that information alone. Then you're going to go to the next paragraph, and this is the paragraph that is just going to talk about the characters. Again, this is not a summary of the story, but you're going to touch on some of the main characters in the story. Every story has a main character that's called the protagonist. The protagonist is sometimes we look at the protagonist as the good guy. Not necessarily always good, but typically in a story, the protagonist is the good guy. It's the person who has the problem in the story that has to be resolved. And so you want to talk about the protagonist of the story. 
You also want to talk about the antagonist in the story. And usually there's an antagonist, somebody who causes a problem for the protagonist, um, who kind of causes the conflict or makes the conflict continue in the story. So you want to look at the, the protagonist. And then there's usually a few other main characters um, in the book. I want you to hit on at least three characters of the book. And so you're going to tell me who the main character is, and you're going to tell me some things about that character. Maybe it's a physical description of what they look like. Uh, you might talk about their personalities. You can talk about how other characters feel about that character, uh, things that they say or think about that character. Uh, you're going to talk about, you're not going to summarize or tell what they do in the story. You're just going to explain what their personalities and what their character is like. Um, maybe uh, two or three sentences per character. So you'll have at least six sentences in that paragraph. The other thing that's not written in that uh outline format, but I want you to add is I want you to give me two or three sentences about the setting of the story. Where does the story take place? What, maybe what time period, uh, what, describe the location, describe um, the time period in which the story happened. So you're going to give me some characters and setting information in that second paragraph and that's it again no summary of the story just talk about the characters talk about the setting then we're going to move on to the third paragraph the third paragraph or the third section talks about the conflict and the plot the conflict in a story is always the problem in the story Every story has to have some sort of a problem. The main character has a want or a need, a desire that has to be fulfilled, something that they have to overcome in order to get to the end of the story. And in order to drive the story forward and make you continue reading, we're watching as the protagonist, the main character in the story, attempts to solve their problem or their conflict. And that's what we call the plot of the story. So you're going to focus your attention in the third paragraph on the conflict of the story. What is the main problem? And then what is the plot? There will be many conflicts in a story, but we're going to focus on what is the main one that is attempting to be solved through the entire story. Um, you will kind of summarize some of the events that are significant that happened. You're Again, you're not going to retell the whole story, but here is a place where you'll talk about a few of the events, maybe when the conflict was revealed in the story, and then a couple of situations that might have happened as the, as the main character is trying to come up to a solution for the problem. Again, you're going to, we're talking about maybe eight to ten sentences. So don't write the whole book again. Just a few sentences to discuss the conflict and how does the author deal, how does the main character deal with that conflict. Now we're going to come to the fourth paragraph, and that's when we talk about the climax of the story. Now the climax usually happens closer to the end of the book, and it's the point in the story where the author or the, where the main character sees, or we can see in the story, that there is a solution to the conflict. We don't necessarily know how it's going to be resolved, but we know, based on where the character is in the story, that he or she is going to come up with a solution. He's either going to have a positive result, and it's going to be a happily ever after, or it's going to be a not so positive result. Usually we have happy ever after stories, but sometimes the stories don't end so happily. And so it's the point of the story when we see that that resolution is about to happen. And that is what we're going to talk about. What is the climax? What is the event that leads up to the problem being resolved or the conflict being resolved? And then what is the resolution? How does it actually get resolved? So kind of summarize the story there. How is the problem resolved? And then what is, this, what is the theme? What should you have learned out of this particular story? What did the author want us to understand? What are some things maybe that we need to change um, in our thinking based on the story? And so 
that is what you would do there for the climax to the theme. That's the resolution of the story. The fifth paragraph is your final paragraph, and that is the conclusion. And this is where your opinion counts. This is where you get to express how you felt about the story, uh, some of the things that you learned or that you picked up as you read. And so you're going to begin, first of all, um, if you look on the outline, by expressing your general opinion of the story. Was it enjoyable, inspiring, fascinating, dull, exciting, compelling? However, you don't use the word I. And you don't say you, you don't say me, my, anything that would refer to yourself and nothing that would refer to the reader. Don't ever say you, okay? So instead of saying, I thought the book was exciting, say, the book was exciting. So just make it as a statement um, and not as what you thought, okay? Um, so just no I or my or you or me. Um, and then you can discuss, you've got a list of several things that you can discuss. You don't have to cover all of them. Some of them you may not know anything about. You may not understand that, so don't worry about that. You want to make sure that your paragraph has about eight to ten sentences in it. So some of the things you can discuss are um, maybe a part of the story that you thought was interesting. Um, characters, what did you think about the characters? Were they well-developed? Were they realistic? Were they likable characters? Um, how did you feel about the conflict? Was it intriguing or was it predictable? Did it keep you, uh, was there an element of mystery or suspense, adventure or surprise? Was the climax exciting or was it disappointing? Was there a good resolution? How did you feel about how the problem was resolved? Uh, is the theme clear? Is it powerfully presented? Do you agree with it? Is it inspiring? Is it an important lesson for most to learn? Again, that's one of those areas that you may not have an opinion on, so don't talk about it. Um, your, what is your favorite part of the story and why did you like it? Everybody has a favorite part, so that's an easy one to put in there. And then sometimes we have a least favorite part, and so you might spend some time talking about your least favorite part and why you didn't like it. Uh, and then literary devices, uh, you may not know what all of these are. Um, if there's something that really stands out to you and you want to give some information about it, especially for you high school students who have had a little bit more literature background, you might have something that you can say about the literary elements within the story. And then you want to close with a final clincher. And this is just like we did with the friendship essay where we referred back to what our attention grabber was and we gave it a final clincher to draw it all to a close, to kind of reflect back to that. That is the basic breakdown of the critique. What I want you to do for this week is to do the introduction paragraph, and do the character paragraph. I just want to see how you're breaking it down. Have that typed so I can look at it. I'll give it back to you and then you can finish the next week. You'll do paragraphs three and four. Thanks for letting me take Friday off, guys. I really appreciate it. Cammie wasn't feeling real well. You need to help her out and um, appreciate your understanding. If you have questions about your assignment this week, please don't hesitate to send me a message and let me know. Um, Thanks for watching the video, and uh, I'll see you Friday. Bye, guys.